President Cyril Ramaphosa has officially appointed nine commissioners to the Commission for Gender Equality. This in terms of Section 9A of the Commission for Gender Equality Act 39 of 1996 as amended. The President of the Republic of South Africa, President Ramaphosa, has appointed new commissioners and the chairperson for this commission. This, of course, effective from the 1st of August. Tamara Eugenia Matebula, who's been serving as the acting chairperson, has been appointed to the position of the chairperson uh, for the commission. The commission advances, uh, promotes and protects uh, gender equality in South Africa through undertaking research, public education, policy development, legislative initiatives, effective monitoring as well as litigation. Matebula will serve as uh, the chairperson until the end of her term in October of 2022. The new chairperson of the commission, Eugenia Matebula, joins us now live from our studios in Pretoria. Ma'am, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for coming through and I suppose congratulations on your appointment. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for having me this afternoon. Now, it's really not going to be that much difficult for you, I suppose, because you've been acting on this position. What will your point of departure be? Um, thank you very much. I think first and foremost, um, I just want to say that I am grateful to uh, be appointed as the chairperson of the commission by the president. And I'm quite humbled to take over from my former predecessors and the giants that um, I believe that I'm standing on the shoulders of those giants for a better view. So having served as the deputy chairperson as well as acting for the past seven months, I think for me, I have been able to actually de uh, develop the, a long-term strategic plan for the Commission and in those within that strategic plan um, there the are set targets as well as strategic objectives that we need to drive towards achieving them and um, the second thing that I I think will be a priority during my tenure is that I will make sure that there is enough resourcing there is enough funding that goes to the Commission that will enable us to be able to realize our broad legislative mandate but the third thing that I think remains key is to just look inside and make sure that uh, we strengthen the institution, we look at our policies, we review those policies, we make sure that um, you know good governance is realized within the commission and last but not least we look at how we can best deal effectively and efficiently with issues that are on the ground in as far as gender equality and making sure that we contribute to the decrease of gender-based violence and femicide that we are experiencing in our country, South Africa. Yeah. So, of course, you made mention of uh, some important factors here, uh, ensuring that you have enough resources, there's enough funding to run the commission. Talk to us about the challenges really that you've encountered in the seven months that you acted as the chairperson. And as you said, uh, previously you were the deputy chairperson of the commission. So what are those major challenges that you encountered uh, in your journey there at, at the Commission for Gender Equality? Um, thank you. I would say that uh, major challenges that we have encounter, encountered as the Commission um, are not new, new, new challenges. But what I've realized is that um, if you talk about the Commission for Gender Equality, you go out there to communities or you go out there and speak on radios and television, you will find that many people don't really know what Gender Equality, Commission for Gender Equality is. Unless you always make reference that we are the same as the public protector or maybe the Human Rights Commission. And I think uh, the public out there only know those to uh, Chapter 9 institutions. But if you mention the other or the rest of the Chapter 9 institutions, including Commission for Gender Equality, people don't really know what you're talking about. And or some of the people that may know something about us would actually think that we're working as, as an NGO, as a non-governmental organization. We are there, we are out there, we must help them with this, we must help them with that. Not fully understanding our mandate. So I think that's challenge number one, that we need to actually go out there, raise awareness around our mandate, speak to people, speak to stakeholders, collaborate more broadly so that our mandate together with those or the stakeholders that we think are relevant can actually go a long way in terms of fulfilling the mandate on one side but at the other side making sure that they service that is delivered to people that need it most. Mm. And 
You appointed to this position during an important month as we commemorate and celebrate Women's Month in South Africa. And there's always been concerns really around inequality, females not considered and treated the same as their male counterparts. How are you hoping to tackle this? Absolutely. I think it was a, a, a quite an important appointment during this month when we are all going out there to reflect. First of all, I think we will need to reflect, look back at what South Africa has achieved in general, not only South Africa, but South African women in terms of, um, you know, the role that they have played previously from the periods of 1956, but also looking at the role that women are currently playing in the country in terms of making sure that that together as a collective or individual, we achieve gender equality. One of the key things that we see is that within political parties um, and amongst uh, some of the uh, government departments as well as private sector companies, uh, women and men are still unequal in terms of occupying the same positions, filling the boardrooms, but also being paid equally for the same job uh, that they do. Uh, so those are some of the things that we will actually be going out, raise awareness around, and also talk about how important it is to make sure that uh, within departments, within institutions of higher learning, in communities, as well as companies, we always realize what we call gender mainstreaming. Gender mainstreaming is nothing else but making sure that we always sensitize people, government and all levels, to make sure that when they do plan, when they put their plans together every year, put their programs develop their budgets, they always put on a gender lens to say how does this actually benefit women and men equally. We are also celebrating um, the unsung heroines. There are so many women out there that have done so well. Some are entrepreneurs, some are running their own companies, some are starting, and we want to say those to those women, well done. And I think what we are also celebrating is what we have achieved in Parliament today, coming from where in 19 1994, where women were just, you know, under 3% of the total population in Parliament, and today we have 50-50 uh, 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 quota in, in Parliament that has been realized. So those are some of the things that we will be uh, celebrating achievements. We will tackle challenges of gender-based violence, domestic violence, femicides. Those are some of the things and messages that we will carry over throughout the month in terms of sensitizing both women, men, boys, girls, equally to say gender-based violence and equal opportunities are not acceptable anymore in our country. Yeah. And just in conclusion, the commission has released a number of reports over time. The one that comes to my mind, uh, uh, the latest one, is the one on the state of shelters in South Africa, which was released by the commission. What sense of cooperation are you getting from those who should heed the recommendations and act on your recommendations as the committee, as the commission? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for mentioning that. Actually, that one is the one that is really um, has actually gone to so many people's hearts and ears. And, 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 and I don't even want to say it's closest to my heart because that one actually is one of the achievements during my tenure. Um, yes, we did a, an investigative hearing into the state of shelters in the country. And I must say that um, with those recommendations that we've put down, um, which is, um, again, Again, you know, we are challenging a government, particularly the Department of Social Development, as well as the Department of um, a Housing or Human Settlement, to really look at and, and, and revamp and, and make conditions better in the shelters for women and men that are actually going to these shelters. I must say that those messages, as well as those recommendations that are binding, have actually reached the both departments with such an overwhelming uh, a, 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 a welcome and they are saying they want to work with us in terms of improving conditions of the shelters and they will make sure that budgets and allocations are, are looked at in the shelters so that conditions and services there are, are improving uh, um, yes, I must say. All right. No, we'll leave the discussion here for now, but uh, hope to have you back soon in studio. Thank you so much for coming through and everything of the best in your new appointment. Eugenia Matebula is uh, the newly appointed uh, chairperson of the Commission for Gender Equality, joining us live from our studios in Pretoria.